It's become abundantly clear that the Earth's ice is melting at an unprecedented rate, contributing to sea level rise and widespread effects on Arctic ecosystems. But how do researchers determine exactly how much ice is disappearing around the globe? Accurate measurements are essential for building models to predict where and when sea levels will rise. Satellite data has become extremely important, including a NASA project called ISAT-2, launched in 2018. Using a laser altimeter to measure ice elevation, the satellite can measure the ice loss in very small, closely spaced areas. By summing up ice loss estimates, they can then assess the loss over broad areas. But scientists still need old-fashioned field data. You can't really have one without the other. You know, satellites provide that key, that key aspect. We can get images from around the world every two weeks going back consistently for 30 years. Uh, we can get images going back to the 1960s from sort of declassified spy satellites. But there are limits to satellites' temporal and spatial resolution. The individual kind of pixels, the grid squares of that satellite image may only provide velocity information at a scale of hundreds of yeah. meters. It may be limited to uh, days, if, if not weeks, to, to collect kind of accurate, reliable information. So within that, these kind of more dynamic processes that we're discussing, things like lake drainages, things like carving events, you need some sort of ground-based system to, to compare and contrast against that to capture these events that might be missed by satellite imagery. So the researchers hit the ice to get the ground truthing they need. Zero, one, two. On the left, you see the, the glacier and there it's about 300 to 400 meters thick and it's probably grounded. It's probably not floating. It's just touching the base. On the right hand, you see the fjord. And the fjord is covered in what we would call a melange or a sikusak, this kind of loose connection of, of icebergs and bergy bits. It's all kind of frozen together. The plume that you're seeing in the middle, this kind of muddy, dirty water, is water that's come from beneath the ice sheet and is transported beneath and then, then is kind of floating to the top. In the end, the field work and satellite data combine to put precise parameters on a big problem. Massive melt and growing seawater rise. Greenland lost 244 gigatons per year of ice. Um, that's hard to imagine, uh, but it's uh, 100 million Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water, which works out roughly at three Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water a second is being transmitted from Greenland into the global oceans. Will that rate of loss stay about the same in the coming years? Will it accelerate? Researchers will continue to pour over data from satellites and carefully collected on-site measurements in hopes of providing answers.